morning, all of my Simply Foodies. It's your boy, Simply Food by T.Y. Look, today, you guys, we are going back in the kitchen yet again. It is really, really early, and we are going to be making a homemade from scratch blueberry lime pie. So let's get to cooking because we got a long day ahead of us. Let's go! Do I have your attention? 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 Is you taking notes? So you're going to need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You're going to need two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to need one fourth of a cup of chilled ice water, as well as one fourth of a cup of chilled vodka. I will tell you why that's so important in just a few moments. And then you're going to need 12 tablespoons of cubed salted butter, and then eight tablespoons of vegetable shortening. So what we're going to do right now is work on our dry mix. So we're currently adding in our sugar, our salt, and then we're also going to be adding in that really, really cold butter, which we had in the freezer. And then we're also going to be adding in the shortening as well. Now, you guys, this is probably one of the most important steps when it comes to making a pie crust, and that is making sure that everything stays extremely cold so while you are doing everything else while you're getting everything prepped make sure that your shortening and your salted butter is already in the freezer staying nice and cold now as you guys can see this is kind of the same technique that i use when i made my scones i'm only using the tips of my fingers because they don't produce that much heat and what you don't want is for your butter to start melting. So if you use your entire hand, especially the palms of your hand, you retain a lot of heat. And if you start using the palms of your hand, you're going to start to melt to melt the butter. And then that's just not going to be good. So, you know, just take your time with this part right here. Use the tips of your fingers. And what you're trying to do is kind of break down both the butter and the shortening so that it makes little grains and mixed in throughout the flour. If you have a food processor, you can absolutely do that. That is completely fine, especially if you're going to be doing this during the winter time when typically your house is warm, of course, from the heat. I would actually suggest to use a food processor because you'll be able to incorporate the butter and the shortening much faster at a quicker pace and then you won't have to worry about the risk of the butter melting because as you guys can see i'm not speeding up any of this right now because i want you to see how long it takes to do it by hand i personally prefer to do it this way because i just feel like you can get a better consistency and you will start to feel what it's meant to feel like and in the end result but again if you have a food processor and let's say you know you can't be doing this much stuff with your hands by all means use the food processor what you would want to do is to take half of the flour half of the salt and half of the butter half of the shortening mix it up a little bit pulse it you know maybe about three or four times just to make sure that everything is incorporated and then add in the other half and then pulse it about another you know 10 or 12 times uh, but i would say for your first time just so that you know what it's supposed to feel like when you're making a homemade pie crust i would say do it by hand because the thing is if you put it in a food processor for the first time and if you've never made a pie crust before you won't know what the consistency that you're looking for and there is a chance that you could over um pulse it too much and you don't want that you do want those little tiny pieces of butter and shortening to be completely mixed through because i'm telling you it is going to add the most fabulous flakiness to the pie crust and that's what we all love about pies now as y'all can see honey every now and then honey i had to stretch up my hands because this stuff will it will give you a fierce workout but, you know, don't stress about it. Everything will be fine. You know, get your kids to do it. Make sure they didn't wash their nasty ass little hands, honey. And then just get them in there to just mix it up. But remember, once again, make sure that you are only using the tips of your fingers. Try to avoid, you know, mixing it up with the palms because you really don't want to melt any of that butter or the oil.
Okay, so now that it's looking good, we're gonna go ahead and add in the one fourth of a cup of our chilled water and the one fourth of a cup of our vodka. I know you guys are probably thinking, vodka, yes, vodka. Vodka will help prevent too much gluten being formed in your dough, especially while you're mixing it around and forming it. You don't want too much gluten or you're gonna end up with a tough pie crust and the vodka helps prevent that. So as you guys can see, all I'm simply doing is trying to just slightly get it mixed together. Once you see that it's starting to stick to each other and you're able to get everything off of the sides of the bowl, then you know that it is mixed through. This is not really a wet dough, so don't expect that. It's supposed to look like this. It's going to all come together on its own. So you're just going to lightly flour your... Um, you know, your area, wherever you're going to roll out your dough or get your dough prepped. And at this point, all we're going to do is just bring in the dough together. Again, you want to make sure that you're moving kind of quick with this because you do not want that butter to melt. So we're just trying to form it into one big circle. And then after we get it into one circle, then you're just simply going to cut it in half. And then you're going to take each of those halves and then individually make them into circles. Now, some people don't do this. I've seen plenty of people where they just take the pieces like this, they wrap them in the saran wrap and pop them in the fridge. Me personally, I find that if you form it in the disc prior to you putting it in the fridge and try to, you know, even out as many of the cracks as possible, it just makes it 10,000 times easier for you to roll it out in the end. So I like to just prep mine like this before I even put it in the fridge. Now, you can put this in the fridge for a minimum of one hour, but I like to do mine overnight. That's just my own personal preference. But you're going to individually wrap these in saran wrap, make sure that they're completely wrapped. And then I put them both inside of a Ziploc bag and just pop it in the fridge. Just so you know, these do also freeze well. So if you want, follow this exact same process, but just put the freezer bag in the freezer. Okay, you guys, so let's work on the filling. So we have five cups of fresh blueberries. We have one cup of granulated sugar. Then we're also going to be adding in one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We'll be adding in one eighth of a teaspoon of both cinnamon and nutmeg, the zest of one lime, and then two tablespoons of lime juice, and two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, which is our thickening agent. So now all you want to do is very lightly mix all of this together. Be careful to not bruise your blueberries in the process of mixing this up because then you'll just add a bunch of juice and you're gonna mess them up and you want them to stay nice and solid and firm. Once you get everything mixed up, you wanna wrap this in saran wrap and then you're gonna pop this in the fridge and you want this to sit to the side for at least one hour. That's gonna allow the cornstarch and everything to already start to thicken up all the juices within the blueberries. Okay, you guys, so now that it's been 24 hours since we've had this pie dough in the fridge, you want to flour up your surface and also make sure that your rolling pin is nicely floured as well so that none of the dough sticks to it. Also, make sure you only take out one of the rounds of dough out at a time so that the other one can stay nice and cold. Now, as you start to roll out this dough, you'll notice in the first few, you know, rolls out it'll be a little bit on the tough side but it will start until it will start to loosen up because of the heat from the wood so you want to be kind of quick about this um also make sure when you're rolling out your dough roll out from the center out uh that way you can keep it nice and even now a lot of people try to make it seem like you need to get it into like this perfect circle in order to like put it over the shell i think that's kind of foolish and the reason why i say that is because the way my dough and this particular recipe works out, as long as you have the circumference of this dough larger than your pan, which in my case is a nine and a half inch pan, you'll be completely fine. So don't stress about trying to keep it in some perfect circle because you're going to be wasting a lot of time and you're also going to be running the risk of your pie crust getting way too hot. And we do not want that to happen. 
as you guys can also see, you'll start to notice more yellow spots and little white streaks. You guys, that is that shortening in the butter. I'm telling you, if you don't see that while you're rolling it out, you ain't do something right, honey. You want to see that because I promise you, as it starts to bake, it is going to make your pie crust so extremely flaky. So you definitely, that's that's a good sign if you see it. Don't, don't think you've done you know, something wrong if you don't see that. So right now we're just continuing to work it out on, on both sides. And like I said, you know, try to make sure that you're rolling it from the center out. That way it's not going to buckle in the middle and it stays, uh, you know, consistently even. This is a pretty giving dough, so you don't really have to stress about that. And then you'll take your rolling pin and you'll just roll your dough on the rolling pin. That'll be the easiest way for us to then roll it back on top of our baking dish. Uh, this is the easiest way to transfer it. I mean, you can also pick it up, but I just tend to just do it this way because it's just significantly easier to me and it takes no extra time, you know, to do so. So, you know, just that fast, you were able to roll it over. So what you're going to do now is take the dough and let it drop into the bottom of the pan. Be nice and careful with it. You know, don't try to stretch it. Whatever you do, do not try to stretch it because all it's going to do is it's going to return back to wherever it was before you stretched it out. So let the dough fall into the bottom of the pan and then press it down to make sure that it's nice and flat. And that's how you'll have a nice secure bottom in um, the actual crust. And if you see any holes, you know, you can take some of the loose dough and kind of patch it up. That's completely fine. Don't stress yourself out about that at all so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our beautiful blueberries that we had set um you know resting for an hour and we're going to pour all of that in and as you can see they've become nice and thick that's that sugar and that cornstarch i'm telling you letting them sit and rest for an hour is going to make the biggest difference for you because it's already gonna it's gonna help thicken up the pie itself which is what you want you definitely do not want a loose and runny pie at all honey then you want to get yourself some kitchen shears and just go around the base of your pie and if you see that you have too much dough hanging off on the side then you know just trim it up a bit um just so that it's slightly hanging off the side but not too much so just keep working your way all around and then um we'll move on to the next step. So while we start to work on the lattice part of the pie, which is the decoration part on the top, make sure you put the entire pie dish in the refrigerator so everything can stay nice and cold. So right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get it into, you know, somewhat of a rectangle. This one you definitely want to get in as much of a rectangle as possible because this is where we're going to be cutting out those long strips to go across the top of your pie. Now, if you don't want to do this, honey, you ain't got to do all of this. You can simply roll it out the exact same way you did the bottom half and just lay it over the top and just make sure you cut yourself some holes in the top. That way, the water will have, um, the air will have somewhere to escape and then your pie won't bubble over. The reason why I like to do a lattice top, especially on a blueberry pie, is simply because there is a lot of liquid and you want the most of that water to evaporate out of the pie and that's just the most easiest way to do it and you know and the best way I feel to do it without having to worry about the pie boiling over so then just get yourself a little pastry cutter or like a pie um, you know like a pie pinwheel and just cut yourself some strips don't stress yourself out about how even they are you know, it's not that big of a deal. People trust me. I I'm not that anal when it comes to, you know, how perfect everything needs to be. And then you're going to lay the longest ones that you've cut vertically across. Now, depending upon how big your pie dish is, 
you may or may not need to use as many. Um, I had a lot extra, so it kind of worked out just fine for me. And then you're going to also take some and put them horizontally. And you're going to start off by doing every other one and you're going to work your way underneath and then after you work your way underneath, you'll grab yourself another strip again. So as you guys can see, I've gone underneath for that one. And then you're going to grab yourself another strip. We're going to continue going horizontally. And then for this one, you're going to go over the dough. And then you're just going to repeat this process um, over and over and over. But you're only going to do the inside too. So the uh, first layer, we did the outside three. The next layer, we did two. So you'll just repeat this process. So now we're going to do the outside three. There's one. There is number two. And then finally, number three. So just kind of remember that three, two, three, two, three, two. Um... So yeah, so that's that's pretty much how you make a lattice design. And like I said, some people find it really intimidating because it can seem so complicated. But if you just remember 323232 three, two when you're doing it, and as long as you stay in that order, it'll be fine no matter what. And then you want to just pinch up the extra dough that you have on the side. Now, if you have a lot of dough hanging over from the lattice pieces that you've cut you know just get your uh, kitchen shears and just trim it off a little bit you don't uh you don't want to keep too much on and it's important to make sure that you kind of have an even amount of dough going around the edge of your pie that way you don't have you know one side of the pie is more bulkier than the other and then the other side is really thin now as you guys can see this kind of looks completely messy but don't worry we'll tidy all of this up in just a few moments the good thing about pies are is that to me they're meant to look rustic they're not always meant to look like picture perfect like i don't like i like a pie when i know that someone's made it homemade you know what i mean so now what i'm doing is now that i rolled up all the sides i'm just taking my two fingers and i'm doing the most basic crimping across this entire pie i'm not doing anything fancy i'm not doing anything special you can absolutely do so if you want to but i don't think it's necessary because i think one of the most beautiful things about this pie is that you've done the lattice so you don't need to do anything else so now what we're doing is we're taking a pastry brush and I beat up one egg, you know, just lightly beat it up a little bit. Mm, child, that sounded n nasty as hell. But anywho, uh, and now we're just going to brush the entire pie with this egg wash so that our pie crust can have a golden, beautiful brown color. And then we're going to top it with some sugar. And then you're going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. At that point, you're going to reduce it to 375 for about another 30 minutes. And once your pie starts to boil and bubble like this, your pie is done. You guys, it's just that simple. It's not that hard, I promise you. But the most important thing of all of this is that you must, and I repeat, you must wait at least three to four hours before you slice into it so that the juices have time to firm up. If you cut into it too soon, it'll completely fall apart. But look, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys try out this pie. And as always, y'all babies stay cute and take care. Bye, guys. I really hope y'all try out this blueberry lime pie. Simply Food by T.Y.